What's happening people, I hope you're all well. So I'm out here previewing Spain versus England and normally boxing is my remit, but listen, at the end of the day, you gotta be able to talk about multiple topics. So Spain versus England, it's the Euros 2004 final. And when I'm previewing this and looking at who I think is gonna win, well, first things first, for those who are into a spot of betting, you know, I haven't got time to make a betting video for this. But it's an interesting fact that neither side has kept a clean sheet since the group stage. So if I was a betting man, I would definitely look at the markets for both teams to score. And when I last checked on Paddy Power, I believe it was pretty much even markets. So you could pretty much get 50-50 on each side. So I would definitely look at the markets for that. But with regards to who's actually gonna win the fight, um, win the fight, with regards to who's actually gonna win the match, I would look at the fact that it's a case of who really wants it more as well as the technical skill aspects of the game because England don't tend to reach finals. So if anyone's gonna turn up, I would say that it is England. Anyone's gonna turn up wanting it a little bit more, I would say it's England. And with that, because you often see this, I don't know if any of you watch like the Carling Cup. I don't know what the Carling Cup's called these days, but you'll get like some small town team. And I always remember Luton versus Liverpool. And Luton turned up, Luton turned up, and I think they were like winning the game 3-1. They ended up losing 5-3. But sometimes these smaller teams or these teams that are just not expected to win, they'll turn up and they'll turn the, the bigger team on its head early on. And normally what will happen is it'll take the bigger team a bit of a second. It'll take them a minute just to sort of think, wow, these lot are coming for me. Because normally in a game of football, you'll feel each other out. You will sort of you know, pass the ball around, get into your tempo. But when these smaller teams come up against the bigger teams, sometimes these smaller teams aren't trying to pass no ball around. They're just trying to set a high tempo and let you know, let, let you know we are here. And often that can catch the bigger team off guard and you often see bigger teams one goal down, two goals down. And then as the, and then as the uh, game unfolds, the smaller team can't, keep the pace of the tempo that they have set. So, yeah, I think England, England tend to play at a high tempo anyway. England these days tend to play at a high tempo. And so I think that having a high tempo may actually suit England here because Spain, historically and typically speaking, don't really play at a high tempo. Spain like to use the ball as its weapon. Whereas England tend to use athleticism, pushing play. I think that Spain's style suits a longer match, but England's style, England, if they turn up wanting it a little bit more and they set a high tempo early against a team that likes to move the ball around, I think that England could find themselves one goal up, two goals up. I can see that. I can see that happening. But what England really need to do here is score enough goals. England need to score enough goals in the first half so it's almost a mountain to climb for Spain because Spain do not have the speed. Spain need to use the ball, but I'm telling you, if England are three goals, England, for England to win this, they can't be two goals up at half time. For England to win this, they need to be three goals up at half time because I'm anticipating England laying a couple of goals in in the second half due to nervous energy and fatigue. I'm anticipating that. I'm anticipating England letting in a few goals in the second half due to fatigue and due to due to nervous energy 
and due to uh, just not having the composure england typically speaking don't have the best composure but you know harry kane if harry kane starts that's an interesting selection because typically speaking if i'm looking at a a team that doesn't necessarily rely on athleticism and speed and sharp play like spain i would normally say yeah put a harry no i would normally sorry excuse me i would normally say no do not use a player like Harry Kane. You're better off using a play like Raheem Sterling. You're better off using players with a bit of zip. You're better off using players even like, you know, players with speed like Rashford or uh, what's his name? Um, Vardy in his prime, Vardy when he was a bit younger. Players like that. You're better off using players with a bit of speed to offset the team that lacks the, the high paced tempo that's normally what i would say but with harry kane harry kane you know being a player who doesn't need speed he you know he he's able to score free kicks he's he's got the he's got the dead ball specialist mentality and harry kane if he's got fast players to his side fast players to his side and you've got other players like walker who you know you've got you've got your left back he's fo you got the Sp spain you got the spaniard left back he's focusing on the winger he's focusing on the right winger and then you've got carl players like carl walker who can run ahead of the spanish left back and the England right winger because these wingers on the England team are going to be man marked but that gives an opportunity if you're ambitious enough and you are a player like Carl Walker who's got zip who's got strength who can knock a team off balance you have a player there who can turn from a right back into a right wing back and you can get a player to support Harry Kane waiting in the center. You, if you can do that, then Harry Kane, having a, having a player who's not the quickest up front is okay. But if you've got a player up front who relies on wing support because he can't run himself and those, and, and those wingers are man marked, then you are essentially nullified. So if Harry Kane's going to be starting in the centre, he needs not only wing support, he needs, he needs support from the right backs and the left backs to put those balls into the box. But saying that, when I'm previewing this game, I think there is going to be goals and I think there is going to be goals from both sides. And when I'm previewing this game, I see England starting fast when i'm previewing this i see spain you see sometimes when you've been there so many times and you 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 know you've been the best team in the world in recent times you don't have the same drive as a team that's always fell short so i am anticipating a game where england score probably first in fact you know what if I was to put my life savings on any team scoring first, it'd be England. However, the one danger that I see, if England score first, it's still at game on. If Spain score first, I think there's a big chance there becomes an early drought, an early onslaught rather from Spain and England could find themselves in trouble. I think there's more danger of the game being lost in the first half if Spain score first for England. If Spain, if Spain score first and then another goal goes in, I think it's game over. If, if England go two up, I think it's still game on. So England need to be leading this game by three goals to zero at half time for me to not back with a glass of wine and say, do you know what? Let's change the channel to something else. We already know what's gonna happen here. Anyway, what do you think about what I have spoken about here? Who's gonna win the game? 
England or Spain, you let me know. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Hear the notification bell so you get a notification when I make a new video. If you are watching this on my boxing channel, then make sure you subscribe to my sports channel. Link for that is in the description. And with that, enjoy the rest of your day. See you on the next one.